was a two-point game with four minutes and change to go in the first half. BC went on a 22-3 run, and the Eagles cruised from there. We have not played well on both sides of the basketball. When you don't uh, have a reference point of winning, and I think that's the most difficult thing to understand the discipline daily that it takes in order to become consistent. And all those things we have to do better. We have to continue to develop guys. You know, we have to continue to help them, you know, reach their potential as players. So far, the ACC's leading scorer still stuck on four points. The spin by Jamarius Burton. Like this year, um, with this team, you know, everybody just has the expectation of we're trying to do better, we're just trying to win, and, and winning at, at any cost means sacrifice and, you know, doing whatever it takes. Second difference, shot clock, game clock. Here's the ISO switch against Smith. Burton, his jumper, it's good. Pittsburgh back up. The best thing about basketball for me is just competing and um, getting better each and every day. That's what I find the most joy um, with this game. Hi, I'm Jamarius Burton. I'm a 6'5 combo guard out of the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, I grew up in Champaign, Urbana, Illinois. Um, the game of basketball was first introduced to me by my mother and my sisters. My mom played college basketball at Alabama A&M. My sisters played at Payne College in Fayetteville State. So for me, I just always grew up around the game, in the gym, traveling to AAU tournaments, going to their games. I was a little kid on the sideline dribbling the basketball. I was in charge of the cam recorder at the time, you know, filming their games. And for me, uh, my passion just grew from there. My sister had went up to Charlotte for her high school ball and was able to get a scholarship to go to Payne College in Augusta, Georgia. So um, my mom figured it was a good, you know, place, um, Charlotte, you know, for us to get exposure basketball wise. So we moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. She got a job and for me, I instantly was on the B teams in North Carolina. And then um, I continued to grow, I continued to develop. Um, I understood that I was kind of below, you know, the curve as far as my age group at the time, being on B teams, seeing the guys that were in my age group being, you know, highly ranked, um, really good, being looked at by college coaches um, as soon as ninth grade. So for me, I, I just continued to work my way up. When I got to high school, I played at Philip O'Berry Academy of Technology for two years, played there for two years, made varsity as a freshman, came off the bench my freshman year, then my sophomore year I led the team in multiple categories started, and then that's when my recruitment started picking up. So going into my junior year, I was able to pick up about seven offers. I transferred, went to uh, Independence High School, played with Team Loaded AAU 16, 16U, that's when I got my scholarships and then um, tore my ACL, sat out junior year, and then played my high school year at Independence High School. My senior year, we went 31 and one, won a state title, and then that kinda opened up my recruiting again. Because I tore my ACL, all the colleges that were looking at me, like Wake Forest, Penn State, VCU, all those scholarships were gone. So for me, I just, 
banked on my senior year and winning. You know, winning cures all. Winning, you know, will put you where you need to be. And for me, that was just my focus, win my senior year and then look at whatever college is and make the best decision after that. For me, it just came down to player development. You know, I, so for me, I went to Wichita State. I seen that Ron Baker was a walk-on, made it to the NBA. Fred Van Vliet was not a high-rated guy um, going to Wichita State and was able to make the NBA. So for me, I just fell in love with that dream and that goal of being a guy who's an underdog, a scrapper, um, and you know, that just puts the work in. And that's the reason why I went to Wichita State. So my goal was to always play Power Five. So I transferred to Texas Tech, um, played there one year, learned a lot of great things. My coach went and um, sought out another job opportunity. And um, for me, I just got in the portal, seeing what my options were after that. And then um, came to the University of Pittsburgh. My first impressions were JB was a very mature kid. He knew what he wanted, hard worker, diligent worker. When he first touched campus, I knew he was going to be a worker. Um, I knew he wanted to be great at his craft. He was, he was a little bit standoffish, but as I talked to him throughout the days when he first got here, he kind of started to open up a little bit and trust me. And I just knew that he was a very focused and dedicated person to not only his craft, but just being a good person to other people and trying to accomplish big things. And so I really, um, I really gelled with him early on. First year was rough here. I think we won 11 games. It was kind of rough. Um, but this year we were able to get a collective group together um, that bought into not only coaches to what coach you know schemes were and, and what he was preaching, but we all bought into one another and winning and being selfless in that area and not caring about who got the glory, who had a good game this game. The first year he was here, he did everything that we needed him to do, but it was harder for him to pull guys along, and that was one of the things he started to realize. You know, we talked to him about some things, but he understood that, that he needed to make sure he was more accessible to his teammates so that they would understand him. Um, one of the biggest things are we had guys that were kind of similar to how JB was in terms of, you know, wanting to win, wanting to work hard, putting the work in, and, you know, just overall having a good camaraderie in the locker room and it showed on the court as well. You know, Cape has his pillars where we show up, we keep our promises, we appreciate what we have. Um, and those are like the epitome of what pit basketball is meant to be. And so I think that JB really fits well into that culture, partly because, I, as I said before, he just wants to be a good person. And not only does he want to be a good person, he wants to be a great player, and he wants to be a great teammate and a great leader. You know, we just all bought into winning, and, um, you know, that's why we had such a special year. I'm good, man. Can't believe it, Jamie. Yeah, they're back here. What you about to do? You coming back there? Yeah. Uh, got fired. Fired from where? Working out. Oh, who fired you? You. No, I didn't. I asked you. In college, this is yeah, he right just, there. he That's just never, he just never gave me the indication that he was with it. I was there all summer and fall. <laughs> yeah, I know. I figured you were, you were, you were, you know, transitioning your talents to, you know, recruits or something. To nothing. <laughs> to nothing. Twin. Two o five. Still two o five. Yeah, but I feel so much like better. You cut with the salad knife. You mean salad for today? Yes, but what like kind of salad? Cause I see you post roots. No protein with a lot of protein in it. Yes, it's just that in the in the greens and like beans, veggies. You should be like I feel more. leaner, but then again, like I'm lifting too. Like the way my body is, like if I lift heavy weights, yeah. I get bigger. That's true. But you're not gonna gain weight that quick. That's it. If we can get up to like, is Nally back there? You know, when JB needs it, I'm on the curb working with him. 
going over different drills that I know he'll have to do. You know, I, I went through this process a while back, 10 years ago. So just trying to have him mentally there as well as physically there and just, you know, being confident. All it takes is one team to fall in love with you. So just being consistent in what you're doing and knowing that you're, you're capable because I think he's shown it on the court. And, you know, when you get into these moments of opportunities, that's one of the things. And I know he believes that he belongs. So that's, that's how I've been helping him. If you, if you go to Boston, yeah. they're going to make you run the fucking Boston. I know, the three minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the last thing you should do is show me running. The training and the, the regimen of what we're trying to do has changed because he's going to play a different game. The court will be a little bit more space. The three-point line is further away. So, first and foremost, we want to get a lot of shots up, letting them shoot from further out. JV is not really a, known as a three-point shooter, even though he can really shoot the basketball. The biggest thing for him is get those reps up, shoot the basketball, let everybody know you, you can make shots too, as well as defend and make decisions and rebound. So it's been, it's been fun. It's been, and I try to give him some sneak information here and there if I know who's going to be in the workout with him or what to expect from the next workout from the different teams because we've been around it so much, just trying to give him any possible advantage we can for him to continue to chase his dreams. I feel like, you know, me being a guy who's an underdog, who's been on B teams and stuff like that, I've always had to do what other guys want. So for me, that's my advantage. I've always looked at what are, what, what can I do to give myself an edge? What are other guys not doing? If I see them partying, that's great. I'm gonna come back in and, and shoot. Cause while you're partying, I'm shooting. I've always had that mindset ever since I was little. And um, that's really what's, what's pushed me um, to continue to um, push myself and do more things and, and see what I can do to give myself an edge. I got in communication with knees over toes. He's a knee guru. Me, myself, personally, I've had multiple knee surgeries. This is a guy who's had multiple knee surgeries. So to be able to connect and take what, you know, he, his knowledge and, you know, implement his plan as far as my knee outside of what I'm doing here at the school has been amazing as well. Um, Coach Brown, Milan Brown, Gil Brown also has been helping me tremendously with my skill development. Vince here at the University of Pittsburgh, um, strength coach, he's tremendous. I'm also working outside of campus. I'm going to Pilates classes and addressing, you know, some core weaknesses, some glute weaknesses, some hamstring weaknesses and training my body in a different way. And, I've been doing that for five to six weeks now and I, I feel tremendous. Like my core is way stronger. I mean, I'm just working muscles that I never, you know, thought I could work in. I mean, I'm just grateful for solid core. And, um, and you know, those few things have really just helped me, you know, throughout my draft process. Pittsburgh took a chance on me. Everybody else thought I wasn't a power five caliber player. Um, so for me personally, I'm forever indebted to, you know, Pittsburgh. You know, I feel like Pittsburgh adopted me. Pittsburgh embraced me. Pittsburgh allowed me to make mistakes and continue to go out there on that floor and fight each and every day. I just saw so much growth and maturation in our coaching staff and our managers and our players and then in JB in general you just finally saw his his vision his drive his determination of of who he is start to actually shine through the light where we don't have this dark gray cloud looming over us as as a team where we're not together we're not co a cohesive unit we are not a full team um, and to see that be built and put around him and all of the other guys to to see them with the the energy enthusiasm that they played for one another um that they played with each other it was just uh it was a beautiful sight to watch i've been grateful each and every day i drive through the liberty tunnel and i see the city each and every day i thank god for allowing me to be here and allowing me to have done what i've done you know at this university if I got drafted this year, it would mean a lot. You know, I've been grinding my whole life for this opportunity. Um, but for me, 
Um, my work never stops whether I'm drafted or not. For me, I have goals for myself, goals for my game, and wherever I land, um, the work starts there.